Sports card scammers and fraudsters appear to continually get away with doing bad behavior. They keep getting second chances. They keep getting let off the hook. The hobby has a short-term memory. Those are all the things we're going to talk through today. We're going to have a deep discussion on it, specifically talk to the likes of, you know, Bill Mastro, Rick Probstein, Slab Stocks, Mealy Pops to an extent. All these little things that, you know, and big things happen within the hobby that people appear to be getting forgetful about or they just don't really care because there's too much self-interest. We're going to talk through whether or not cancel culture is needed. How much do we block people from actually participating in the hobby after they've done bad things? Do we give them free reigns? Do we block them completely? Those are all the things I want to talk to today. Now, the reason why this discussion came up in my head was because I was watching AOH Sports um, earlier today and he interviewed, you know, Imperial Sports Cards and what they talked about with regards to, you know, shill bidding and, you know, auction houses and hanky panky. They reminded me about an interview that Slab Talk did with Rick Probstein about 10 to 11 months ago. And in that interview, Rick talks about how he doesn't see any issues with allowing Bill Mastro to be a consigner on his platform, which at the time turned a lot of people's heads because Bill Mastro is very notorious in the hobby. And if you're not sure who he is, basically he used to be the head of Mastro Auctions, which if I remember correctly, was either the largest or one of the largest, you know, auction houses within this space. But he got indicted in 2012 for committing, you know, shill bidding fraud, basically mail fraud. And the way he was able to do this with, you know, a few, you know, acquaintances was that they would, they were able to basically see the amount of max bids that people were placing on their platform. So if somebody was, you know, bidding on a card and the max bid was currently at $8,000, they could go into the system and see what per, what that person places their max bid. So let's say it was 50 grand, they would then go in with a shill bidded account or a fake account and bid it up to like $45,000 because they could see everybody's max bid. They would constantly bid everything up. So anyway, this guy was indicted, sent us to jail for, for 20 months, which was pretty light. But the reason why, and this was a federal prison too, so um, a big deal. Um, the reason why this is an interesting one is because he was always, also notoriously attached to this Honus Wagner that you can see on screen right now. PSA 8, first PSA card ever graded. Um, there was always whispers around you know, him having trimmed that card or somebody having trimmed that card within the time that he owned it, or at least prior to him owning it. He basically you know, confirmed or confessed, I should say, once getting, you know, indicted that he did in fact trim this card. Now, his whole excuse for this situation was that he didn't trim the card. The card was cut from a factory sheet. It was cut a little bit too big. He just trimmed it to be, you know, correct size based on factory dimensions, which, you know, whether that's okay or not in his mind is irrelevant because that's trimming how anyone goes by the book, right? So it's a it's a pretty alarming thing. It's pretty systematic with what he basically did. He went to jail for 20 months for this nothing, you know, super light. He went to a federal prison for, for God's sake, right? So it wasn't like it was, you know, something minor. Yet when Rick's prop scene comes on and basically says, well, I don't have an issue with consigning cards for this guy, it raises, you know, a lot of questions for, you know, potential buyers. And I don't want to go back to this interview from 10 months ago. The reason why I want to talk about this is because it once again talks to how there are people out there that have done really, really bad things that still get rewarded or people turn a blind eye to. From Rick's, pro from Rick's perspective, he basically looks at it and says, well, if he does anything bad on my platform, I'm going to ban him, but he committed mail fraud. He only trimmed that one card. I don't consider it a big deal. I'm happy to still consign with him. I don't want to cut someone off completely. And sports card therapist talks to his own opinions on this, and he basically says, yeah, no, those guys should be like let go, right? Which is probably you know, the same viewpoint that I share, like from your perspective as a potential customer from Probstein, right? Would you not want to know if somebody who has known to trim a card before in the past, a very expensive card, is consigning cards to a platform and you don't have any, you know, oversight or you don't know who this person is and you don't know that they're selling on that platform and you buy a card that has gone through that person's hands, that's very tainted. And if you knew about it, you probably wouldn't have bought it, right? So the question then comes, well, if it's happening in this space with somebody that, that has gone to jail for committing fraud of that nature, right? It's very systematic, right? How many other things and how many other people have done, you know, bad things that have, they haven't gone to jail for that are also selling on this platform or they're also selling on Golden's platform or PWCC's platform that you don't know about? Like we look at it within this, you know, soccer scam that I've raised many times in the last couple of days about how these fake soccer cards keep landing on BGS, right? There's all these tainted things that are happening Yet you, as a potential buyer, you're very unsuspecting because you don't see it. We also see things like slab stocks, like I explained, you know, in my weekly news video a couple of days ago, where a lot of people don't remember that slab stocks in 2019 got caught pumping and dumping. They were, you know, pumping up cards through their monthly subscription service. 
saying to buy these, their hot cards, the prices are rising. Meanwhile, they were going on their mum's eBay account and selling the same cards. Again, that's very you know, naughty behavior, right? Yet people still reward them for it. People have a short-term memory. So where do you draw the line? These guys now have like 80,000 Instagram subscribers or followers, whatever you want to call it. We also see something very similar with regards to Mealy Pops and the whole Logan Paul fake Pokemon case situation. He worked quite closely with Card Kahuna to, to try and sell this case to Shine to then sell it to Logan Paul. It's a pretty, you know, alarming thing. How much of the information on the fake box did he actually know about? Probably nothing. But again, he's somebody that's tied to this that hasn't really had to pay any consequences. And again, I'm not calling for cancel culture. I'm not calling for these guys to get in trouble. I just think it's very interesting. Oh, sorry about that hurt coughing fit in the middle of that. I just find it, you know, very, very interesting. Like how many of these other things are happening that we, you know, have no clue about? How many other known trimmers are out there using certain services that you don't know about? Like, where do we draw the line as a hobby? I'm not for cancel culture in any way, shape, or form, right? So please don't take this as me saying, you go after slab stocks, go after mealy pops, go after Probstein. I'm just saying, these are the kinds of questions, you know, we need to be asking. Would you feel comfortable continue to use Probstein as an example if you knew he had those comments around, you know, Bill Mastro? Irrespective of whether he's a known trimmer or not, like, the level of, like, systematic fraud that he committed shouldn't be let by very lightly is the point I'm trying to make. And I think the sports card therapist shared those sentiments in, in his video. I just found it, you know, a bit surprising. And yes, the interview is 10, 11 months ago. I just completely forgot about it. I, I remember watching it at the time, but it's just crazy how those kinds of things can get by. And it comes down to like all these, you know, relationships that you don't really know about within the hobby. Obviously, you know, Bill knew Rick quite well because they were in the same space. Like, how many things do you think maybe Golden has let slide on his platform on the guys out at PWCC? Like, people know each other. They want to scratch each other's backs, and they're friends with each other, and they want to help out their friends. And that doesn't mean they've done anything wrong. But you as a potential customer, right? I'm not saying these guys have done something wrong, but you as a customer have a right to know whether Bill Master is consigning cards to a certain platform or not. And I don't know how they fix that. And I don't know how we can try and expect more from them moving forward. Like, is he also consigning cards to Golden or PWCC? I just, I just find that, you know, very odd and very disappointing to hear that. And again, I know it's 10, 11 months old, but I thought it was a really good discussion point to have because, you know, we've had that Slab Stocks example. We've had, you know, Mealy Pops to an extent with Card Kahuna in that fake Pokemon case. Like, there's these guys that do things and then people all of a sudden, you know, forget. I think you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Where do we, you know, draw the line with these things? We talk about wanting to hold, you know, businesses accountable all the time, but how do we then start holding individuals accountable for their actions? Do you think Bill Master should have been banned and, and barred completely from any consignment house, any greater, anything like that? Do you think he should have been banned completely? You know, it's unfortunate, but, and you can say, yeah, he's done his time, get over it. But at the same time, it's like, well, you're talking about something that was so systematic, so pervasive, very uh, calculated in terms of the way he committed his scams and his fraud. Is that somebody you want to be buying a card from? You know, me, probably not. So... Happy to get your thoughts on this down in the comments below, as always. I just wanted to quickly chat through that because I thought it was interesting when I was watching that live. It triggered a few light bulbs, and I was like, well, okay, this makes sense. We just spoke about slab stocks, so let's talk about this and, and try and link them together to have a bit of a deeper dive as a, as a community. So very keen to get your thoughts on this, as always. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.